What's up YouTube, I'm Mr. No Name, or Max as people know in the real world, and today I'm bringing you guys that 3v4 gameplay I promised you. Uh, this is going to be a fairly heavily edited clip because the game was extremely long and I didn't really do that well, so I brought you the rounds I did well, and I showed you how much we're, we were down by, and I brought the final rounds as well. So basically guys, you'll see that we were down 0-3, we went around, and then we wind up getting into a position of being down 1-4. And you will see us come all the way back and win it 6-5, which is just really, really awesome. So I wanted to go ahead and use this gameplay to show you guys um, just some tips and tricks on how to win 3v4. Whether it's just a 3v4 situation or if it's, you know, you're actually having to play the entire map 3v4 like we did here. So the biggest thing here is going to be confidence. And there's several things to this. First of all, you need to have confidence in yourself and your teammates and you need to know that you can win. It is possible, you can do it, you just have to focus up. Now then, you don't want to be, of course, overconfident, and you don't want to have too little confidence here, because that can make you make bad plays or not be as focused. Another aspect of confidence here is use your opponent's overconfidence to your advantage. This happens to us sometimes. We will get overconfident, we won't be paying attention, and we will lose the kids that we shouldn't be. If you're playing with a man advantage, for the entire map, I guarantee you, you're going to be kind of confident or cocky. So play on that. Try and get your first few rounds off of that and build off of it. Next thing is the importance of getting first pick. The first pick in a 3v4 situation, if you're with the three-man team, is so important because you have to even it out. And on a map like Octane here, that is not too hard to do. All you need is a really good sniper or somebody with a good thermal sight or something just to get that first pick, even it out, and then run away, back off, and re-engage as a team on now on a 3v3 situation. Next thing is just kind of outsmarting your opponents. Like I said, they're probably going to be overconfident, and it should be easier to outsmart them. Um, they are going to be expecting you to either hole up in the base or just not even care. So, you know, on defense, maybe still kind of hole up and everything, watch the choke points, but you need to be making plays that they're not going to expect. Try and get across to their side somehow, try and cut the map, things like that. Next thing is communication. So in a 3v4, communication is so key. You need to know exactly what your teammates are doing, what you're going to be doing. You need to plan it out, work together, and all that fun stuff, and you need to have your callouts on point. Next thing is trading. So in a 3v4, you do not want to be trading, if at all possible, which means you need to win your gunfights, but this is the time in a 3v4 where you cannot afford to not be in a situation where you can pick up the trade kill if a teammate goes down. So you need to be trying to watch different aspects of the map, but still be able to rotate extremely quickly to pick up the other person's line of sight. So you'll see in an example for the Octane here, you'll see me watch the A cross with a thermal AR while I have um, Phenom watching the B cross with a sniper or something like that, you know. And we can kind of rotate fairly quickly to help each other out there. Um, I can watch if anybody's rushing to him and he can, you know, watch the B cross. And then we got somebody rushing across to B and then sitting up and either cutting the map or pushing through into their spawn and getting some kills. Uh, next thing is cutting the map. So if you don't know what this is, this is something that singles players use all the time, uh, sometimes in dubs as well. Basically, you're just trying to figure out a spot that you can go to where you can see everything pretty much, and it's just a certain part of the map you can't see. So the ideal situation here is usually to cut the map into uh, thirds and have two thirds of it clear and then just worry about that last third sometimes you can get a better situation but in a 3v4 if you can get into get it into a third that'll be good if you have somebody cut the map and then you just have um, the other two people watching the choke points you should be set to go next thing is talking about the play style here and play style for 3v4 can be rather interesting I'll say because I feel like the, the best way for this to work is on defense to play um, fairly passive, as in, you know, having several people back watching choke points, and then having occasionally one or two people, if, you know, if you don't want to have them sitting back watching the choke points, rushing up and um, getting set up to cut the map and things like that or get into their spawn. On defense, on a 3v4, I don't encourage you to rush quite as much. However, it is something that they are not going to expect, so you can use that to your advantage. 
Just depends on what you want to do with it. Um, on offense, you need to get aggressive, but you need, again, to get that first pick. So this can be as simple as pushing across to the map through smokes with incog classes or you know just watching a popular rush spot and just getting that first pick getting behind them because they're not going to expect you to get that aggressive because they're going to expect you like on octane on offense they will probably expect you to either try and run across to a or hole up and strip they're not going to expect you to really kind of push out across the middle of the map or try and get bombed down right away it's just not something they're going to be expecting so um i hope this helps you guys out some uh, if it did, you know, let me know. If you've got some other thoughts in a 3v4 situation, let me know. Help others out in the comments. So as you guys can see, we're coming to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, then please like, comment, and or subscribe. If you didn't, then let me know what I can do better next time. Constructive criticism goes a long way, guys. Until next time, everybody, peace out. And one last thing I forgot to do, shout out to Phenom for dropping 16-6 and 6 in S&D. He carried us this game. Go follow him on Twitter. I'll put it in the description below. Peace out.